Hello, my name is Harold Tafton, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we're once again on the Archeo SMP, where I'm planning on doing something about this chaos you see around me. I'm sure everyone's been in this situation with villagers. It's probably as ubiquitous an experience as finding yourself with a disorganized chess monster after finishing a big build. But here I am, surrounded by all of these very helpful villagers. This started as a very makeshift villager breeder when I first joined the server. I needed basic enchantments like mending and protection, silk touch, efficiency, and all that good stuff. Then, as I started building other things around the server, and I started making other villager types to more easily get supplies quicker. As most things in life, a little planning up front avoids a lot of chaos later, but here we are. However, today, we're taking steps to solve this. I know many of you have likely seen lots of people create a place to organize villagers and make trading halls. Heck, I would bet a great many of you watching this have built trading halls of your own. You know what I'm talking about. A nicely decorated room with little cubicles all in an organized line to house and trade with your mass of villagers. But I wanted to do something a bit different. I was thinking over this dilemma and thought, since I'm building an, an archeological and historical style on this server, wouldn't it be better to build them their own little village on my island? So that's exactly what we're going to do. In today's episode, we're going to build a promontory fort and some Iron Age roundhouses to house some of my villagers. Now, in some past episodes, I've talked about roundhouses and built some in my Irish ring fort episode, as well as some in my video on Cranogs. As such, I'm not gonna really focus on the Iron Age roundhouse as much here. And instead, I would encourage you to check out both of those videos and I'll link them in the end of this one in those little end cards so you can easily watch them once you finish this video. Instead, I'm gonna be focusing on the promontory fort aspect. So let's jump right into it. Promontory forts are most often found in Ireland, particularly in the counties Kerry and Clare. They're also found in Devon and Cornwall, in the southwest of England, the Isle of Man, Brittany, the Orkney Islands, and can also be found in Wales and Scotland. They generally date to the Iron Age, and I've seen their dates identified as being between the 6th century BC up through the 1st or 2nd centuries AD. However, I also read some accounts of some promontory forts being occupied in Ireland from the Bronze Age, so before the Iron Age, and extending through the early medieval era, which is four to 500 years past the date that I just mentioned. Likewise, I've also read accounts of the Vikings who arrived in the Isle of Man in the 8th century to early 9th centuries AD, reusing and updating some of the old promontory forts there to suit their purposes. Another source I read dated the promontory forts in County Clare in Ireland from around 1000 BC all the way up to AD 1700. That's nearly a 3000 year span of time. So long story short, as I said, these structures are difficult to date. And so making a broad generalization about their date is really as far as you can go. So basically their height is the Iron Age with perhaps some dating a bit before that in the Bronze Age and others dating after that into the medieval era or perhaps even farther all the way up to AD 1700. With regards to their purpose and function, promontory forts, as their name implies, are a defensive structure, i.e. a fort that's built on a promontory. In other words, a small neck of land that extends out of the coastline that juts outwards into the ocean. Imagine a little finger of land along a rugged cliff line that's a mini peninsula. There's also another related structure called a cliff edge fort, where instead of the fort being built out on a peninsula, instead that fort's placed right along the cliff edge and was protected by a half circle bank and or a fortification wall and often an outer ditch beyond that wall. In either type of structure, whether it was a cliff edge fort or a promontory fort, similar to what I'm building here in this Minecraft world, there were often a number of roundhouses placed within the fort. This setup allowed a highly defensive structure to protect the Iron Age roundhouse village, and it was nearly impossible to siege as three sides were surrounded by cliffs and ocean 
and then the sides facing the land were protected by a bank and often a ditch as mentioned previously. This ditch is also known as a fosse. The banks were often topped with a palisade, in other words, a wooden wall or fence made of stakes, or sometimes a dry stone fortification wall. The term dry stone comes from the fact that the stones weren't held together with mortar. They were just stacked one on top of the other in a way that fit them tightly together. Sometimes promontory forts had a couple of banks and ditches. This form of defense and depth no doubt added to the protection of the promontory fort, but could also likely add to the status or reputation of the promontory fort. Remember, it isn't always about being the most defensive structure possible, but often is more important to just be more defensive or perceived as more defensive than your neighbors, thus making you a less desirable target for raiders. Beyond the defensive functionality, promontory forts were also a fully functioning community and village, and thus allowed for an active trading network along the coastlines, or from promontory fort to promontory fort. Moving away from the historical and archaeological features of promontory forts for a moment, one thing I wanted to touch on in this video that's related to these structures is how they are vulnerable archaeological sites. This is due to the effects of climate change along the coastline of Great Britain and Ireland. These locations are thus one of the more at-risk types of archaeological sites. Some data around this comes from County Sligo in Ireland. Based on Ireland's National Monument Service records on weathering and erosion impacts on archaeology, from 2010 to 2013, there were between 7 and 20 sites affected per year by weathering or erosion. However, in 2014, that number jumped up to 90 reports of affected sites. This is partly because of the severity of storms that are increasing in frequency and, and severity, as I said, but also likely due to increased partnership with local communities and their awareness in reporting vulnerable sites and at-risk coastal archaeology. Let me break down these numbers a bit more. Of those at-risk sites, about one-third were middens or burnt mounds, about 13 to 14 are Bronze Age tombs like cist burials or Bronze Age or Iron Age barrows. And if you want to know more about cist burials, I have an episode about that in my catalog. And then another 13 to 14 percent are defensive sites such as promontory forts or cliff edge forts, but also include later medieval seawalls or castles. I mentioned middens and burnt mounds, so let me quickly define what those are. Middens are basically historical garbage heaps, but burnt mounds are a bit more mysterious. They seem to date to the Bronze Age and are a heap of shattered stones and charcoal usually associated with a nearby hearth. It's thought that the rocks were heated in the hearth and then placed into water. The rapid temperature shift would then shatter the rocks thus causing those shattered rocks. Some have theorized that this might have been a way of quickly heating water for cooking, or maybe perhaps even for bathing. In any case, with both middens and burnt mounds, those are normally in areas called soft coast, whereas defensive structures like promontory forts or cliff edge forts are usually in areas called hard coasts. Soft coasts include sandy or dirt, and grassy areas and are more affected by erosion caused by sea surges or storms, whereas in contrast, hard coasts are cliff or rock line coasts, and so compared to the soft coasts are much more protected. It's estimated that around 30 hectares or around three square kilometers of land area are lost per year around the coasts of Ireland. With promontory forts being right along the edge of those coastlines, there certainly have been affected by all of this erosion. Okay, so enough with that tangent, and now with the build complete, let's move some villagers. I like to chuck down a bunch of boats to trap them and keep them from wandering off. Now, I hear you saying, why not just trap them in minecarts? Why use boats? And yes, I could be doing that, but I wanted to show you this boat and minecart trick that I like to use. Because the distance I'm moving these guys isn't all that long, using this little trick isn't critical in this case. But I find that when I'm first capturing villagers for the very first time, sometimes that village might be hundreds of blocks away from your base. If you stick a villager in a boat and then run a minecart through that boat, then the minecart travels under its own power forever, and you could move them all the way back to your base without having to use powered rails or push the minecart manually or with a furnace minecart. So let's get started getting all these villagers in place. 
and let me snap into the future and you can see how this looks. Well, that took a lot longer than expected, but the chaos was managed. Oh, hello. <laughs> I left three farmers down here so uh, I, could, I could breed more villagers if I need. But let me show you what I did. This is my little underbase here. Let's fly out over the uh, over the village. So I organized each of the villagers in each one of these little huts here. As you can see, I put the uh, the map guys out over there. I think I put the farmers in the next one, and then the other the other types all grouped together. I couldn't fit all of them in all the houses, so I put put my my weapon smith down here. He can maybe look out over the pasture land. And then the other ones I put up in my tower house. Let me show you that. You can still, I see, still need to do the floor. Still have to do the, still working on my, my storage area down here. And then this area down here leads to all my farms. But, uh, but let's, let's talk about the villagers. So I created little little areas to trade with them here. So my little fisher guy and my guy with the smoker, my butcher. And then up at the top level, I put the cleric and then I put all of the all the librarians all nicely organized. Well, that wraps up this video all about promontory forts and the Iron Age village I created to house and better organize my villagers on the Archeo SMP. I dropped some of the resources I discovered and used while researching this topic in the description so you can check them out if you want to learn more. If you wouldn't mind, I would love it for you to hit the subscribe button and like the video if, well, you liked the video. That way YouTube knows to recommend this video to others who might also enjoy it. Please also feel free to leave me a comment about what you liked or didn't like so I know better how I can focus on making content you most enjoy watching. Thanks, have a good rest of your day, bye for now.